Hello and welcome to another video. Um, as you can see, I'm sitting at my computer, which as usual means that I'm looking at something on the computer. As you can probably tell from the title, what we're looking at today is the recent article in the Times about asexuality. Um, the Times is a national newspaper here in the UK, and so it's a pretty massive thing for asexuality to be covered in. A lot of the exposure we get in the media would be in LGBT plus magazines and uh, websites. Whereas this is going to reach an audience that aren't necessarily interested in LGBT plus issues. So without further ado, I'm going to get into what the article entails. And yeah, let's see how it is. So this article was written by a journalist called Stephanie Marsh. Um, and the main, I guess, premise of the piece is that was interviewing several asexual people or people who identify as asexual or romantic or somewhere on the spectrum. Um, so in the lineup of interviewees, there was Yasmin Benoit, um, who, as you probably know, is a prominent UK uh, asexual activist. Um, Emmy Salida, who is a fellow YouTuber. Uh, Elliot Simpson, who is an asexual comedian and a good friend. Um, Alice Oseman, who recently released the book Loveless. Uh, someone called... Uh, Edward N. Mm? I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his surname, so correct me, please. Um, who I don't know anything about. Uh, and me. And we know who I am. Well, hopefully you do. Or if it's your first time on the channel. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm homo romantic asexual, and I make videos on YouTube about stuff. When this article was released, one of the big things that people had an issue with within the ace community was its title. Uh, the piece was originally titled uh, Generation Asexual Let's Not Get Physical. Um, obviously this is playing into the misconception that all aces are young and it doesn't help that um, all the interviewees were in their mid to low to mid 20s. It's important to stress that not everyone who identifies as ace is young. Um, there are people into their 40s, 50s, um, even older, who identify as asexual and they have done for a while even though maybe they didn't have the language for it. But it's also worth noting that this title wasn't chosen by the journalist uh, or anyone involved in the project uh, directly or is involved uh, with it properly. It was um, something done by someone who works part-time and it has been changed. Um, it is now with the asexuals. Let's not get physical, um, which is better from the, the changing generation. Generation asexual is definitely a good thing, but um, still, some people have problems with the fact that it says let's not get physical. Which um, obviously, as we know, uh, asexual people, people who identify on the a spectrum, can have sex if they want to, um, and there are tons of reasons for that, which I've been over in videos before. Um, so yeah, it's not a good way, a good place to start, but it's, it's worth noting that wasn't chosen by the journalist and the person who wrote uh, the article themselves. Going into the article, it, it talks about a lot of different things. I'm not going to be putting the article on screen um, because it is behind a paywall. I'll leave a link to it in the description below and you can access it uh, through a free trial if that's something you want to do. Um, but I will be talking about the article as a whole and without talking about specifics because I don't want to get in trouble for sharing the article publicly. Um, to get access to it I just um, started a free trial which I've since cancelled. So the bulk of the article is quotes from uh, the interviewees myself included about their experience about uh, being asexual and it begins with the reactions of people towards asexual who wouldn't understand it. Things like um, it's a phase, you just haven't read the, my, met the right person yet, were you molested as a child? And it, it kind of talks about that for a bit, um, introduces some of the, the interviewees, and um, then transitions into talking about uh, how asexuals look, um, and, and the fact that people might assume that ace people must dress a certain way so as to not, uh, because they don't want to sexually attract people, but obviously that isn't the case. You can dress however you want and addressing like what is 
seen by society as sexy can be a major confidence booster um, especially if other people see it that way you don't want need to want to have sex with someone to want to dress nicely or to dress sexily even and it goes on to talk about representation uh, some of the good and the bad were well, some of the things like doctor who and um, uh, sherlock holmes who are kind of implied to be ace or are seen non-canonically as asexual characters and uh, later on in the article it does actually um, correct what was mentioned in the title in that it says that uh, they're all in their early to mid 20s but lest you're about to mark asexuality down as a millennial slash gen z cult um, there are plenty of elder asexuals but they've come down to come to the realization late in life often married pathologized by doctors along the way for many speaking on the record isn't an option so it is good that it at least acknowledges um, that there are older asexuals even though they didn't have the chance to interview them uh, yes and that was something i expressly said in my interview was that i i, I made sure to emphasize that um we're not all young even though I'm young, it doesn't mean every asexual looks like me, or every asexual is 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 learned about asexuality online. In my, it really depends on the person, and there are people who have lived asexual, lived as asexual, um, with or without the language for their whole life. Another uh, good thing it does is that it um, mentions other orientations within. Uh, within the um, ace umbrella so it does briefly go over a definition for gray asexual and demisexual um, it doesn't go into any further detail on that either um, I think that's something it maybe could have done better but I understand wanting to concentrate on the interviewees themselves and the stories they wanted to share and I don't believe anyone interviewed expressly identified as uh, gray ace or demi the next bit of the article is my chunk, I suppose, the, the bit that I'm talking the most in. Um, and and what was mainly taken from my interview, even though it wasn't the entirety of it, was um, my, date, my dating life and my sex life. Um, because um, I believe I'm the only person interviewed who is uh, currently in a relationship with someone who identifies as allosexual. So that's a unique experience I have among the interviewees. And it's good that it's covered that ace people can date if they want to. Um, but uh, because there are a few arrow race people being interviewed as well, it did also mention that um, people can be aromantic. That's a different thing from asexuality. And maybe they wouldn't want to date. So it really depends on the person and how they identify and how they want to go about dating or not dating, depending on the person. <laughs> Uh, it, while it does mention aromanticism, it doesn't go any further into the split model of attraction. Um, so it doesn't mention things like homoromantic, panromantic, heteroromantic, and it doesn't talk about people who are maybe aromantic but allosexual. Um, that's maybe something it could have gone into in more in more depth. I did find it was a bit odd that he didn't mention that in in my section when it was talking about me because I know from my part I did it I did explicitly say that I was homo romantic asexual I explained what that meant um but yeah I can understand on the other hand wanting to not wanting the whole article to be a list of definitions um because I think that's something that you can find on the internet anyway in, in resources like Avon um and other ace resources on the internet um whereas this was focusing more on like i said earlier the uh, interviews and their stories our stories so, since i'm part of this group and then what it goes into later is um how hypersexualized society is and i like how it uses this as kind of a jumping off point uh from asexuality to question how hypersexual um society is and whether it needs to be that way and how that affects people who maybe I don't identify as asexual and the pressure that might put on them to be more sexual or in, constantly in a sexual relationship and to constantly be sexually active. Another thing they talked about was um, growing up asexual uh, had uh, some people's experience growing up ace um, and how they felt 
in an, in an, an environment where people were changing around them, becoming like more sexual and growing into their sexuality. Um, whereas I think when you're asexual, there isn't that change per se, or at least that change isn't as prominent as it would be if you didn't identify as ace. One thing I, I wasn't so enthusiastic about in the article was um, at one point uh, it was mentioned that um, we've all lived really productive lives and um, kind of implied that it could have been because we were asexual and we didn't have, because we weren't like channeling that energy into sex, we would, could channel it into other things and be more productive. Um, which I think could be a bit problematic just because to people who don't know about asexuality, that could seem like it's painting us to be better, like we think we're better than other people because we don't want sex, which is obviously not true. Um, and from my perspective, at least, when when my boyfriend's around, I am sexually active, so I'm not channeling that energy anywhere else. I'm just productive because if I'm not, I get stressed. And at one point it compares Richard's experience as someone of Chinese ethnicity with um, Yasmin's uh, as, as someone who is who's black and also female um, and how, how how the people around them viewed that orientation um, which I thought was quite interesting from uh, a perspective of race and perspective of gender how that affects how other people view you. Yeah, and then it finishes the article mainly uh, talking about Richard and his experience um, dating and, and how he would like, uh, how he would approach a relationship with and with someone who identified as ally. Um, yeah, uh, one also maybe questionable, th questionable thing at the end was um, it kind of implies that um, asexuality is a negative. Uh, in terms of dating, uh, which obviously it isn't. There's nothing wrong with you um, not wanting sex. There's nothing wrong with not feeling a sexual attraction. It's just a different way to, to, to live, I suppose, a different way to go about life. Uh, you shouldn't feel that you're lacking something in a relationship or you're not able to give enough in a relationship because you don't feel sexual attraction. That's obviously um, false. And uh, from the interview I had uh, with the journalist. I don't think that's something she wanted to say explicitly. It was just um, maybe phrased a bit. It could have been phrased a bit better, perhaps. But on, on the um, other side, it is worth noting that there's nothing wrong with not wanting to date someone who's asexual, um, because some people do need to be sexually desired in a relationship, and if maybe you're sex repulsed and you're not able to provide that to them, maybe you just simply won't be compatible. That doesn't mean you're not compatible with everyone. Um, there will be plenty of allos who are willing to date an ace, um, and there are plenty of aces who are willing to date an allo, but at the same time there are some aces who only want to date other aces because that's the only way they'll be happy in that relationship, and there are some allos who only want to date other allos because that's how they will the only way they'll be happy in, in a relationship and that's perfectly fine you have to find someone you're happy with and do that the, the relationship goes both ways and you're both mutually happy with dating but yeah i think that was pretty much the whole article it was just a bit of a summary sorry i couldn't go into too much detail about it um but honestly i think on the whole it was a positive especially since this is going into a, or this has gone into a national newspaper here in the UK, um, it's definitely good to have that exposure. From my interview, I, I truly believe that the journalist had the best intentions and she was curious about asexuality and willing to learn and willing to listen to our stories. So yes, it wasn't perfect. I don't think anything would be perfect. Uh, and there are things that I could say, oh, maybe you could have written that bit better. Maybe you uh, shouldn't have talked about this in that way. But I think it's important to look at the positive as well. And this isn't obviously going to cover everything about asexuality or romanticism. Um, it could have gone into other romantic orientations. It could have gone into the spectrum a bit more. It could have 
it it would have been ideal if they were able to interview a wider range of people if they were able to interview trans aces and aces who are of older generations um i think that was something a lot of people got hung up on was that all the aces being interviewed were in their low to mid 20s and that is unfortunate it would it would have been good to have someone who is older just to show that it's equally as valid no matter what age you are to identify as asexual and I, but I think that was just because a lot of the people who are active um, in ace activism and ace creators just happen to be uh, younger. But yes, don't just take my word for it. Um, if you have read the article or um, you are going to read the article, do tell me in the comments below and tell me what you thought of it. Obviously, my opinion might be a bit biased because I was involved in the article myself. I was interviewed for it. Do let me know what you think of it if you do get the chance to read it. Um, I know this has been a bit of a lo longer video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. I post videos every Saturday, so if you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. That is all I had to say today. Have a wonderful day, and I shall see you next time. Um, this is actually the second time I've tried to record this video. I tried to do it last week as well, but um, I, the footage was messed up because of the audio. So instead, this time, I'm recording both on my camera and my computer audio.